I met the Udlers way, way back there in the late 60s, and uh, I was introduced to them by a guy called Harry Miller, who was quite a character himself. And uh, he said, you've got to meet these Udlers. Well, he was very interested in snakes himself. He wrote an article for National Geographic and even got my picture published in National Geographic magazine. Wow. So uh, way back then. And he introduced me to the Udlers, and sure enough, I still maintain, I maintain then, and I still today, they are the best snake hunters in the world. They really know how to find snakes. They'll see a small track on the ground and tell you what species it is, when it went this way, where it is now, that kind of thing. They were, in those days, in the late 60s, early 70s, hunting them for skins. They were catching millions of snakes for skins. We exported up to 10 million snake skins a year till about 1974. 75 when the Wildlife Act came into. So when the Wildlife Act came into effect, the Irdlers were basically, well, the, all the Irdlers snake hunters, they, they, they ran out of jobs. They didn't have another job. And uh, they're not farmers at all, they're hunter-gatherers, so there was really not much for them to do. We hatched an idea together, the Irdlers and myself, of starting a venom cooperative, and that's what we did. We registered a cooperative society in 1978, and uh, they now catch snakes to this day up to about eight or 10,000 a year and bring them to the Irdla Cooperative, extract venom from them three or four times, and then release them back to the wild. This venom is used to make life-saving antivenom. It's the only, the only cure for snake bite in India. So even though the Irdlas, I, I try to get it across to them how important the work they're doing, I'm sure they, they have a vague understanding of it, but they don't realize they're literally saving millions of lives in India because perhaps a million people get bitten in, in India by snakes every year and of those 50,000 die. So the Irdlas are playing a tremendous role today. Just a little curious, uh, is it possible to do commercial snake farming? You know, some, some kind of... Uh, where, like, 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 I'm, like I would like, want to know like what are young Irula boys and girls doing? I mean, are they following their, whatever, their ancestral profession or have they moved on maybe to say engineering yeah, college, they medical have. college? So can we explore some possibilities of commercial rearing, you know, and maybe even for snake skin, why not? As far as your question about the Irulas, it's a very important question and the uh, Irula Cooperative is going on to produce the venom but it's only 350 families out of many thousands of families there. So it's very few people are, are involved in it. Young Irlas are now going to school. When I st first started working with them, hardly 5% of the children were in school. Now 90% of them are in school. They're all going on the job markets on the mainstream, which is very tough for them, as you know. Tribal people don't have a very good chance of getting a mainstream job. So, yeah, it's a huge problem and I don't know where it's going to go. As far as commercialization of snakes goes, in India it's a no-no. Commercialization of any wildlife is a no-no, whether we like it or not. 